In the face of another spike in COVID-19 cases, medical professionals urging precautions. What steps you need to take? A landmark ruling by the Supreme Court offering protections in the workplace for the LGBTQ community. We get reaction from Equality Texas to the milestone. Another death of a black man by the hands of police. I'm Nadia Romero at the White House. I'll explain how the president is expected to respond coming up. And we have some luck today. A few showers have popped up here and there. We'll take a look at the radar, see what neighborhoods are cashing in on that rain, and talk about our chances for the rest of the week coming right up. You've probably heard the hype about 5G, but what is it and how do you get it? Some answers coming up. With the second wave of COVID-19 cases upon us, doctors say one group of people are the most at risk. What you need to know, the news at five starts right now. A spike in local COVID-19 cases as medical professionals raising the alarm. An infectious disease specialist at UT Health Science Center says loosened restrictions have contributed to this spike. And she told our Garrett Berger what steps we need to take to push it back down. As the number of COVID-19 cases spike, Dr. Ruth Bergren from the medical school at UT Health Science Center is worried about both the increase in the percentage of positive tests. We hadn't seen a jump that impressive um, since the beginning of the epidemic. And in hospitalizations. One thing that you can't get fooled by is how many people are coming to the hospital sick. Well, the stress on the hospital system hasn't become severe yet. Bergen fears the way things are trending. We know we're headed that way. When you start to see steep rises in hospitalizations, they're not gonna just magically stop when the hospital gets full. <laughs> they're gonna keep going. So even though restrictions have relaxed, Bergen is asking San Antonians to not let their guard down and stay careful. When doctors ask patients where they may have gotten it. What they're hearing is basically it's getting together with family and it's just doing stuff in the community. So wear a mask, reduce the number of people with whom you have contact and stay six feet away. And if you're going to get together with people, ask yourself if there's a way to modify it, like holding the event outdoors and getting near only those in your household. And for older folks and those with underlying conditions, especially Bergen says now isn't a good time to loosen up. And we need to take precautions so we can get to a time when it is. It is my belief that because of our culture here in San Antonio, that we can reel this increase in, um, we can encourage one another and we can get this curve back down to the flat place we want it to be. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And one more thing, Bergen also asked people not to come to the hospital emergency room just to get tested. She's urging residents to find other testing resources. And tonight at six, you'll hear just how in demand those services can be now. In New at five, we're getting a first look at three people accused in a shooting outside a Northside club on Sunday morning. 21 year old Derek Medina, 23 year old Kaylee Medina and 37 year old Daniel Cerna are all facing aggravated assault charges. Police say the trio denied entry into the Monte Carlo adult nightclub on Northwest Loop 410 near Vance Jackson because they were reportedly drunk. Before leaving, police say they drove to the front of the building and fired shots at the front door striking a man standing outside. He was taken to the hospital as expected to be OK. While fleeing the scene, the suspect's vehicle blew a tire and that allowed police to quickly catch up and arrest them. The search continues for the person responsible in the shooting death of 38 year old Jimmy Lee Robinson. He was shot back on May 13th, rather May 31st, at the intersection of Fair Avenue and South Hackberry. Police say that the suspect fired several shots inside Robinson's car and then was caught on surveillance fleeing the scene. Robinson died at the hospital. If you have any information on this case, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. They're offering up to $5,000 for information that leads to an arrest. We are still working to learn the name of a 25 year old man who was shot and killed in an alley overnight. Police say the victim and a woman were parked in an alley on West Ridgewood Court near McCullough and East Hildebrand about three this morning. They say the suspect who had half of his face covered went up to the car, said something to the victim and then fired one shot killing him. Police say the woman got out of the car and ran from the suspect as he fired shots at her. She fell and pretended to be hit and says the suspect took off in a white vehicle. No arrests have been made. A 33 year old man facing charges after police say he shot another man during an argument yesterday. 
This one happened in the 100 block of Arlington Court. Police say an argument between Andrew Mendoza and the victim escalated. Mendoza shot the man in the leg while he was sitting inside a truck. Mendoza was arrested a short time later on a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A San Antonio police officer recovering from a fiery crash overnight. It happened around three this morning along the eastbound access road of Loop 1604 near Lock Hill, Selma. Police say officer Abigail Macias crashed her patrol car into a telephone pole and trees. She was found inside her vehicle when it caught fire. Macias taken <laughs> to the hospital with broken bones in her left leg. Police say officer Macias has been with SAPD for one year. The cause of the crash is under investigation. New at five, those involved in the push for LGBTQ rights say a Supreme Court decision passed today protecting against workplace discrimination is a landmark move. The 63 vote means that a provision in a 1964 civil rights law that prohibits workplace discrimination based on factors like race and gender must also include sexual orientation. People who feel that they were discriminated based on their gender identity or sexual orientation can at least have their case heard. Coming up at six, we're going to continue the conversation about what this means for the LGBTQ community and why LGBTQ rights activists say today's decision is promising but needs more work to be done to ensure equality. Rayshard Brooks, his name now added to the growing list of people killed by police as cries against police brutality have encompassed the world now. President Trump plans to sign an executive order tomorrow on police reform. Nadia Romero actually joins us live from the White House to explain what the president's planning. Nadia. Well, Steve, we hope to learn more details about that executive order today, but the White House press briefing was canceled. Now, we did just hear from President Trump. He says he watched the video of the killing of Rayshard Brooks, and he says it was very disturbing, but would not go on further with any details about what would be in that executive order. Right now, there are protesters out front of the White House, as they were all last week, demanding action. As demonstrators around the world denounce police brutality and racial injustice, another black man died at the hands of police. We are angry. When does it stop? I just want y'all to know that y'all took my cousin from me. Y'all took the wrong person. Police killed Richard Brooks after he took an Atlanta police officer's taser and pointed it at police as he ran away. An autopsy shows police shot Brooks in the back. The trust that we have with the police force is broken. To attempt to repair some of that trust, the Trump administration is preparing an executive order on policing. President Trump's approach is uh, working with the police and the communities to bring them together um, through community policing. Aides say the administration is focusing on four key areas, including school choice, more money to minority communities, what the administration calls health care infrastructure in minority communities, and better police relations. Investing in things like co-responders. Uh, co-responders would allow for police to do their job, but bring in social workers and experts that deal with mental health. The White House is using Camden, New Jersey as a guide. The city dissolved its police department in 2012 and replaced it with a new one that emphasizes community oriented policing. Can I get a high five, man? Since then, violent crime has dropped 42 percent. There's a better way to do policing. But for this family, true justice will never prevail because we will never be able to bring back Rashad Brooks. Now, the president will have a rally this Saturday in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It'll be his first rally since the coronavirus pandemic began. And when you go to that rally, we know that we heard from the Tulsa health director who had hoped that it would be postponed. In the meantime, though, that likely won't happen. So rally goers can wear face masks, gloves and get their temperatures checked, but they do not have to. And there will be no guidelines for social distancing. Live from the White House, I'm Nadia Romero. Steve, back to you. Nadia, appreciate that report. Thank you.
Meanwhile, here at home, the City Council Public Safety Committee is holding three community listening sessions this week. The first one is tonight, actually. It starts in just a few minutes. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says these sessions will give council members important, important guidance regarding people's priorities and expectations. Tonight's meeting is from 530 until 730. You can watch it on the city's website and Facebook page. We have more details on the other two meetings and how you can submit comments or concerns right now on KSAT.com. We have a reminder, today's the last day to register to vote in next month's runoff election. That means if you're mailing in your voter registration application, it needs to be postmarked with today's date. We have more information on how to register on ksat.com slash vote 2020. Early voting begins on Monday, June 29th. Election day is July 14th. And looking outside with our live cam, you see those uh, puffy clouds that had some good vertical development today, which then did lead to some downpours out there. You don't see any rain here within the frame, but uh, about 30 minutes ago, we had a downpour pass through downtown San Antonio. Taking a look at the radar, it's widely separated in nature, but we have gotten lucky a little bit this afternoon in a few spots uh, coming in from the southeast. We have a few little pop up showers, downpours and even a few thunderstorms, especially around Hallettsville and now just north of Hallettsville along 77. Nothing severe, just some heavy rainfall with a little bit of lightning and thunder and even locally. We had that rain, that batch of rain that moved through downtown, but now it's dissipating as it is moving toward Holotus. So Holotus, you'll get a little splash of rain here. Looks like a very brief splash of rain. 94 in Del Rio, we're 88 Floresville. For the most part, temperatures have fallen down into the 80s as a result of some rain cooled air and outflow boundaries. We'll take a closer look at the radar, talk about rain chances for the rest of the week coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. Now to a phone scam warning from the Bear County Environmental Services Department. They've received a number of reports from residents about calls regarding county violations. The scammer gives out a fake confirmation number and tells the resident to call a 1-800 number. Bear County says it does not contact residents by phone to demand payment. If you receive this call, you want to verify it's a scam or have questions, you can call the department itself at 210-210. 335-6700. You can also email the county's code compliance at codecompliance at bear.org. There's new concern. 1,082 new cases of COVID-19 in just the last week. 381 of those just from the weekend alone. City leaders have declared this the second wave. Yeah, that news hits hard for thousands of diabetes patients in South Texas who are at risk of severe outcomes if they get the virus. A doctor tells our Courtney Friedman what these patients need to be doing and why. I've been a diabetic for 42 years. As if that's not enough amid COVID-19, Rosalinda Salinas just got out of open heart surgery. Factors that make her part of a very vulnerable population. The prevalence of diabetes in South Texas and San Antonio is much higher than the national average. About 14% of San Antonians have diabetes. That information coming from Dr. Carolina Solis Herrera with UT Health San Antonio. She says one theory that could explain the blow to diabetes patients' immune systems may lie in the ACE2 receptor in our bodies. Patients uh, with high blood sugars, patients with obesity and other inflammatory chronic diseases have an overexpression of this receptor. And so the virus that causes COVID attaches to those receptors could be a recipe for disaster. So even though the local and state economies are reopening, patients like Salinas aren't moving too far out of lockdown mode. If I want to eat something, I go to drive through, pick it up, bring it home. But I have not gone to any restaurants to go eat because of my fear of getting uh, the COVID. In the event cases begin to spike even faster, Dr. Solis Herrera has suggestions for her patients. Have your doctor's telephone numbers. Have two to three months refill on your medications. Monitor your sugars, especially if you're feeling unwell. Check your temperature frequently and have supplies at home. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. You may have heard the new technology 5G. Soon enough, it'll be used in more ways than one in cities all across the U.S. So what is it and where can you find it? Marilyn Moritz is going to explain after the break.
New at 5, 5G. Just as 2G wireless technology brought us texting and then 3G allowed us to surf the internet with our phones, 5G is what's next. But what is it? 12 on your side's Marilyn Martz explains what the hype is all about. Mama? You've probably seen the commercials singing the praises of 5G, but what is it? 5G will be a game changer because in addition to faster data speeds, it lays the groundwork for more advanced uses like autonomous vehicles and smart cities. That's a ways away, but initially 5G allows for much faster downloads for videos, games, and music, up to five times faster than 4G or LTE. And 5G can handle more devices at once, so you won't have to worry about bad service and a crowd place. So where is 5G and what do you need to get it? 5G networks are still being built across the country. For now, the bigger carriers offer it in many major cities, but some smaller ones too. Locally, major carriers have begun to roll out 5G. Coverage areas and speed should increase in the coming year. But unless your phone is compatible with 5G, you'll have to get a new one that can handle the new faster technology. Phones that support 5G include the U.S. versions of Samsung's newest flagship phones, the Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, and S20 Ultra. LG, Motorola, and OnePlus also offer 5G models. But if you're an Apple fan, you'll have to wait, likely until this fall. The company hasn't officially announced plans for a 5G phone. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So, of course, I'll need a new phone. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Just the way it works. Just the way it oh, works. Oh, it's All so convenient. <laughs> oh, you got to spend more money to get it yeah. on this? Oh, oh yeah. shocking, exactly. right? Of course. Of <laughs> exactly. Course yeah, you have right. to upgrade. We had like a surprise shower down. Yeah. It was nice. This is good. We're getting lucky today because the pattern is not very favorable for showers. But uh, over the weekend, Sarah Spivey and Katie Blake were saying, it looks like things are changing a bit and we could see a few pop-up showers. And... Boom, we have a few of those out there right now. So let's take a look at the activity. The humidity has returned and with it, a few of these pop up afternoon showers. And right now the coverage is pretty limited, but still it's better than nothing. Agriculturally insignificant for most of us, especially in and around San Antonio. Look over the past two hours, came into Lavernia, a little bit of lightning. And then basically right along Highway 87 and Highway 90 here into San Antonio and Bear County, it, well, it, had some downpours, hit us downtown, and then is dissipating now as it's moving toward Holotus. And you get in basically Seguin to New Braunfels, just north of there. We had a few with a little bit of lightning and thunder, but not much left with that. The real rainfall with this has been in Hallettsville and parts of Lavaca County. This has been some good rain, a little more uh, significant in nature, and that's pushing northward towards Schulenburg and especially just west of Schulenburg right along I-10. But that's some good soaking rain, heavy rainfall with lightning and thunder. Nothing severe associated with any of this. These are just some of the tropical downpours we can sometimes sometimes get this time of day, this time of year. Southern Atascosa County, Charlotte to Campbellton, yeah, a few little downpours. These are pretty short lived, though. Don't anticipate these to last very long. So if you're one of the lucky few that gets some of this activity, it's pretty brief in nature. And most of it right along the coastal plain as usual. That's where we've seen some of the higher accumulations. Even in Lavaca County, you look at the rainfall estimates from today and you see this green area indicating a little bit more than an inch of rainfall estimated by the radar. So a few of us in Lavaca County actually getting some of that decent rainfall. But by and large, we're looking at a pattern that just isn't really supportive of good widespread rain. What really stands out here is this big disturbance over the southeastern United States. That's the kind of thing we would need in order to get the widespread soaking rain. We still have the big blue H that's dominating our weather. So tomorrow we're giving it a 10% chance of rain. Today it's at 30. Tomorrow, 10. And then by Friday into the weekend, about 10 to 20%. So a little more of what we have out there. And actually, some rain cooled air. 84 now at the airport, whereas we were in the low 90s not all that long ago. And a good chunk of South Texas getting some outflow boundaries and uh, trimming back their temperatures a bit. You look at Kennedy at 75. Dew points, though, well into the 60s. So that humidity, it's back and it's here to stay the rest of this week. It's going to be around. All right, so this evening, those showers ending by sunset. These are basically from the daytime heating. We lose the daytime heating. We lose those showers tomorrow. We'll start the day at 71 with some clouds, then sunny in 92. And high temperatures aren't going to change much. Generally low to mid-90s all the way through the upcoming weekend. All right.
Thank you, Adam. Hope we get another one of those pop-up showers. There you go. All right, COVID hits the Cowboys, apparently. Yes, yeah, sure has. And their star running back, Ezekiel Elliott. He is one of, we know of a few, not only the members of the Dallas Cowboys, but the Houston Texans as well, that have tested positive. When we come back, more details about what's breaking there. And Pop says Jerry Jones hypocritical. Tells us why. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. A small number of both the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans, including star running back Ezekiel Elliott, have tested positive for the coronavirus. It's according to Zeke's agent Rocky Arsenault, who spoke to the NFL Network, but says Elliott is feeling good. None of the players have been at the Star Complex, with one player reporting flu-like symptoms, while others were asymptomatic. Due to federal and local privacy laws, we are unable to provide information regarding the personal health of any of our employees, the Cowboys said in a statement, but added that we are following all CDC, local, and NFL guidelines to keep our facilities safe, including limiting employing access. Right now, the NFL is only allowing players who need rehab into the team facilities. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich is criticizing Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones and New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft for their $1 million donations each to President Donald Trump's inaugural committee. In an article in the New York Times, Pop says it's just hypocritical. It's incongruent. It doesn't make sense. People aren't blind. Do you go to your staff and your players and talk about injustices and democracy and how to protest? I don't get it. I think they put themselves in a position that is untenable. This is the same article in which Pop also called out NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell for being intimidated by Trump for kneeling during the national anthem. As we welcome back high school student athletes to campuses, we visit with the Southside Cardinals today. They're welcoming back their athletes at Cardinal Stadium after they finished last year at 7-4 and four overall and 4-3 and three in district. Their goal right now is to get ready to kick off their season home on Friday, August the 28th against Eagle Pass. Right now, they're just happy to be back on the practice field. It means a lot. You know, we missed all spring ball. We, we're a school that has spring football, so it's very important to us. We've missed three months of basically doing uh, nothing together. And now we come back, the state's given us a chance in UIL and our school district to, to have these workouts and we're trying to take full advantage of it and doing it the safe way. We got sanitizer everywhere. We got social distancing coaches. It's a little, it's new now. I'm not, tell, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's different, but it's, it's, it's better than what we had, which is nothing. I'm, I'm just grateful that we have the opportunity to get out here and work. So since we're back in, everybody's happy. Everybody's working hard trying to make a difference next year so the energy like the energy we bring like there's a lot of people showing up every every four set that we do everybody's loud every every transition everybody's loud every time we do something amazing everybody's loud so the energy that we bring in is pretty amazing good to see them back together and coming up at six o'clock we'll visit with the sam houston hurricanes all right thank you greg got it we'll be right back Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. We'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock.